Okay, so uh, I'd like to start with a little motivation. Um, recent years have shown an increase in radar system bandwidth. Um, wideband, ultra wideband systems have become increasingly common. And on the other hand, uh, the appearance of compressed sensing has shown us how to recover single signal information from a small number of measurements. And what we're going to do, what we're going to show in this work is um, how to combine these two together in order to create uh, radar systems which work well below the night rate. Okay, so uh, we're not the first ones to try to do this. Previous people have already tried. Um, but previous approaches have suffered from one or more of the following problems. Either they do not actually attempt to uh, decrease sample rate below Nyquist. They have various um, constraints on transmitted waveform. Um, they require uh, infeasible processing, which simply doesn't work for any standard size problem. Um, or they are not very good with noise. And our method actually addresses all these problems, and specifically, um, it samples and processes uh, the signal at a low rate, and it has very good performance with noise and other distortions. Okay, and our method called Doppler focusing is actually based on these three concepts. Um, first of all, FRI, finite rate of innovation. Uh, it talks about how to model signals using a finite number of degrees of freedom per unit time. Um, sampling, compressed sampling, the whole art of uh, extracting signal measurements, a uh, small number of signal, me signal measurements which uh, support recovery, and then Doppler focusing based recovery. Um, now, the main uh, advantages of, of Doppler focusing is actually, we'll, we'll show it in a little bit, but it has a very good uh, SNR scaling. Um, it has a compressed sensing dictionary which uh, does not increase as signal length increases. Um, it can work with any transmitted waveform and it can incorporate um, clutter rejection and other uh, standard radar techniques. Okay, so the remainder, the rem remaining of the talk is as follows. I'll describe the radar model and how uh, FRI helps us uh, model it. Uh, compressed sampling uh, and Doppler focusing based recovery. And then I'll show some results. Okay, so for the radar model, we were uh, working with a uh, pulse Doppler radar, which means we transmit, transmit a uniformly spaced uh, pulse train. Uh, these pulses are reflected off uh, L targets, where each target is defined by three parameters, a delay tau, a Doppler frequency omega, and uh, an amplitude alpha. And so the received signal can be written in this form, okay? And uh, it has three L degrees of freedom, which completely define it. We're assuming that the transmitted pulse shape is known by the receiver. Okay, so three L degrees of freedom define the signal. And just a small note, in order to write the, the signal like we do, we have to make uh, some standard assumptions on target range and, and dynamics, but these are pretty standard uh, radar uh, assumptions. Okay, and uh, we compare ourselves to, to classic radar processing. This is a standard uh, radar signal processing scheme. And what we can see is that the signal's Nyquist rate dominates both uh, A to D requirements and computational complexity. <coughs> So, uh, like we said, like I said at the beginning, as uh, radar systems bandwidth, bandwidth increases, uh, system complexity increases uh, accordingly. And the solution we propose here is actually, as discussed before, break the link between the signal's Nyquist rate and subsequent uh, sampling and processing. Okay, so how do we do this? Um, FRI is a, a method to maybe quantify signals using uh, according to the number of degrees of freedom per unit time uh, which uh, are needed to describe them. And this, our, our signal is completely defined by these 3L degrees of freedom. Mm -hmm. So its rate of innovation is 3L over the signal's duration, P pulses of length tau. And there's no general uh, reconstruction theorem uh, for uh, FRI signals, but what we can show is that for this uh, signal, for this model, 4L squared samples are enough to completely recover it when there's no noise. Again, okay, samples need to be uniformly distributed across pulses. Um, okay, and as a preliminary, pre preliminary step to, to Doppler focusing, we want to show uh, how the signal's frequency information relates to these degrees of freedom. Um, okay, so we can express our signal as a Fourier series, and we can see here that each Fourier coefficient uh, is made up of the signal's Fourier transform, okay? And in green, uh, all three L unknown uh, parameters, unknown degrees of freedom. And we'll show that if we 
it's enough to take two L samples from each frame in order to completely recover this signal. Okay, now, now for the main idea of Doppler focusing. So we're, de we're dealing with a radar. Um, targets are distributed in the delayed Doppler plane. And this is a hard two-dimensional problem to estimate target position. What Doppler focusing does is it actually breaks down a hard 2D problem into a set of simpler uh, one-dimensional delay-only problems. Okay, so we can choose uh, arbitrary frequencies to focus on. And what this does is it just uh, blocks out uh, all targets from uh, wrong or unfocused Doppler frequencies and just leaves us with targets, with trying to estimate target locations uh, for targets which have this focused frequency. Okay, and there are several advantages, advantages to doing this. Um, okay, um, the, obviously going from 2D problem to an uh, easier, well-known uh, one-dimensional problem is the main one, but um, the, each, su each small problem has uh, a factor P SNR increase compared to the uh, original problem. Um, we are able to separate uh, targets with different Doppler frequencies so they don't interfere with delay estimation. Uh, it's very fast to compute using an SSD. And uh, each one of these one-dimensional problems, uh, you can solve it. It's actually a spectral estimation problem, as we'll uh, see shortly. And there is a variety of tools uh, which can be used to solve it, each one for uh, matching the, the scenario uh, you're interested in. Okay, so uh, the actual Doppler focusing operation is basically a frequency domain beamformer. And uh, you beamform the sample coefficients, and uh, what comes out is, uh, is actually uh, part of the degrees of freedom in green, and this exponent sum in, in red. And this exponent sum is, uh, is a good approximation for a delta function, and this is what actually uh, blocks out targets with uh, unfocused Doppler frequencies. They're simply attenuated very strongly by this uh, red uh, sum. Okay, and it's uh, shown here in a linear uh, scale. And uh, if this attenuation is not strong enough, which is uh, many times the case, you can use standard signal processing windowing techniques to, to reduce silos. Okay, so, so we, we've reached these focused Fourier coefficients. And uh, what we see are two important things. First of all, the, the signal is p times stronger than the original signal in the, in the original Fourier coefficient. And secondly, in green, uh, wh what remains inside this focused coefficient is only uh, the, the response of targets which are in focus. Okay, so we've only left those targets uh, here. And this structure is a spectral analysis structure. Um, we know that the, when there's no noise, you can solve this problem with 2L samples, for example, by using matrix pencil. And what we do when there is noise for recovery is uh, use compressed sensing. We discretize the time delay grid, and we simply write this uh, vector of uh, focus coefficients in, in matrix form and uh, recover the L sparse uh, X. OK, and a couple of uh, performance guarantees. First of all, with noise, um, we can prove that the, uh, the Doppler focusing achieves optimal SNR, SNR scaling uh, with number of pulses P. Okay, so we get good rob robustness against noise. And uh, the second result, when there is no noise, we can show that the minimal required number of samples for perfect recovery is 2LP, where it's, uh, it's larger than the minimal rate of 4L squared, but it's definitely uh, it's independent of the signal, signal's Nyquist rate, and it's usually far, far lower. Okay, so what have we seen until now? We said we take 2L Fourier coefficients in each frame. Um, we choose a set of frequencies to focus on, uh, use Doppler focusing on them, and solve each one-dimensional problem using compressed sensing. And for each target we detect, we subtract its influence from the received sample. So the uh, remaining question is how do we sample, how do we get this frequency information? How do we extract Fourier coefficients from a time domain uh, signal? And this was shown before, I won't uh, go into it again, but um, there are various methods to extract uh, frequency information from a time domain signal. This is one of them. There are others. Um, the only catch is that there is some analog complexity that needs to be an added before the A to D stage in order to do these things. OK. And so an actual uh, radar, sub radar system was built according to uh, uh, this uh, theory. It's actually uh, here. Um, you can see the, the sub Nyquist uh, sampling card on top and the um, NI uh, system that runs everything and the GUI. Um, but it's, uh, 
there's no need to show the picture. The system is right here, and it will be demonstrated in a few minutes. And OK, and now for some results. So we compare uh, Doppler focusing based recovery um, for a 1 to 10 uh, rate reduction uh, from Nyquist. And we're sampling at 1 tenth the Nyquist rate. And we compare ourselves to various other uh, sub or compressed sensing or radar algorithms. Now, many or uh, several standard uh, compressed sensing radar algorithms were just, they're so infeasible to run them on just a regular size problem. So uh, some things were just uh, impossible to run. But what we can see is that uh, the best performance is obviously for a Nyquist straight receiver, but from the set of uh, the sub Nyquist straight methods, so Doppler focusing achieves the best performance. Okay, and what we did, what we did in this uh, setting is uh, the following. We said that uh, if we only sample like 10% of the signal's uh, spectrum, then we can adapt the, receive, the, the transmitter, the transmitted waveform, so it only uh, uh, transmits, ener transmits energy on the, on the frequencies we're going to sample. And so we're still doing a 1 to 10 uh, rate reduction, but this time the, the transmitted waveform is adapted to our sampling uh, method. And what we can see is that uh, our sub Nyquist Doppler focusing based recovery achieves better results even than a, a full Nyquist rate classic receiver. Okay, so uh, this gets you thinking, and uh, you, you can maybe adapt the transmitter to, to improve uh, recovery, and this is what uh, Debbie's going to talk about in a few minutes. Okay, and another big problem in radar is target dynamic range. Um, it means that if there are several uh, targets close together and one is stronger than the others, then it just uh, overshadows the weaker targets and it's a big problem in radar and, and uh, there are different uh, uh, methods to try to deal with it. So uh, a, a big strength of Doppler, Doppler focusing uh, is that for each detected target, when you uh, subtract its influence from the received sample, many times you're able to uh, uh, unmask weaker tar targets with, which were hidden underneath the strong ones. And this is just a case where uh, two uh, almost overlapping targets were not able to be distinguished by classic methods even at Nyquist like rate, and Doppler focusing does dis distinguish them. Okay, and maybe a, a final uh, distortion we added. Clutter in radar is a type of uh, interference. And here we modeled it as a random process with a spectrum, a Gaussian spectrum centered around some carrier frequency. And what's nice is that um, the, the whole Doppler focusing based recovery, even though it's low rate samples on, in the frequency domain, uh, we are able to uh, integrate uh, standard radar, radar uh, clutter mitigation techniques uh, as the pre-processing stage before Doppler focusing. Uh, in this case, we whiten the signal after sampling before Doppler focusing, and uh, this way we're able to recover the target scene if, even when there's a strong clutter. Okay, so, uh, so to summarize, um, We've shown a, a compressed uh, sampling and processing uh, radar system. Um, it achieves uh, good performance with noise, with uh, clutter, with a target dynamic range. Um, maybe the biggest uh, advantage is that the whole sample rate reduction is, is adaptive. Um, the designer can control the trade-off maybe between performance and system complexity, and um, you know, he can choose where he wants to be on the graph. And there's a hardware made from this, which will be demonstrated shor shortly. And uh, the next steps, uh, I'll leave to that. Thank you very much.